Another question we get is the is what's the difference between an appraisal and an inspection? And there's so there's uh, initially when you're coming into real estate, there's some confusion around this and what an appraisal actually is. So um, first, let's talk about the inspection. So basically, once a house goes under contract, you typically have an inspection period, a period of somewhere between seven to 10 days where you hire a home inspector to go through the house with a fine tooth comb, tell you everything that's wrong with the house. Then you get a report from them. And then you also have a, um, a period of, uh, what, what's the a resolution period where the buyer and the seller can negotiate on what repairs will be done. Yeah. So an inspection is just observing the condition of the home and what is working and what's not working in the home. So uh, there's not really, because people say, well, did it pass inspection? Well, there's not really a pass fail. It's just somebody giving you a report on the condition of the home. Yeah. The only time you might use the wording pass fail would be if it's an as is situation. So they're selling it as is and you're doing an inspection just to determine Am I going to move forward with the transaction right. or am I not? And some people use that as a, the terminology as pass fail. But in reality, you're just saying, am I okay with the issues that this home has? I'm going to move forward. If so, am I not? I'm not going to move forward. Um, appraisal is a little bit different. Um, it is strictly, in speaking, an opinion of value. Yes. And that just means that the person that's doing the appraisal is a human being. They have an opinion of what the value of that home is, and they're going to give you a number. And uh, the, this is required if you're doing a mortgage. In most cases, there are um, there are appraisal waivers in some some circumstances. But more often than not, if you're getting a mortgage, you will need an appraisal. And the bank just wants to know, hey, this home is worth what we are lending the money on yeah. for. So if if it's a five hundred thousand dollar home, it needs to appraise for five hundred thousand dollars, or the bank is going to make you adjust the purchase price to match the appraisal value of that, the home. That's exactly right. And that appraiser is typically going. The appraiser is typically going to be looking at how homes that have sold as close as they can get to that one, as close as they can get from a, a, a size and bedroom bathroom and also in close in proximity to determine that value. Uh, so yeah, they're just looking at, it's like, okay, were there homes that sold in the past that match this one that can give us like, and when we average those, is that going to come up with this value? And that's why, you know, a lot of appraisals are going to come in right at the number because they're they typically have an excess of data and they're able to grab the data that's going to fit into that lending scenario. But occasionally they can run high or low depending on what the data is out there. But again, to your point, it is just an opinion. Yeah, these right? are these are human beings, right? And and people say, "Oh, they were just lazy. They just put it at the number that it was under contract for." And in some cases that might be true, but in a lot of cases they are instructed to use that actual transaction as a comp yeah. And someone was willing to pay $500,000 for this home. So that's worth something. And so it, a lot of times it does come back very close to um, to the value of the contract. And, and sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's a little bit lower. But um, it, it's really there to uh, kind of protect protect the mortgage industry too, where you know they're not lending money on a, on a house that's not worth what they're lending. Right. So the terminology, so what you're looking for, if whatever side of the transaction you're on is... Uh, the appraisal came in at value, yeah. right? And typically when that when that happens, you're good. Um, but if it's going to come in significantly lower, a lot of times you'll get a call from the appraiser that tells you, and they're kind of like asking for, it's like, hey, do you have any comps that I don't know about? Like they're giving you an opportunity to um, find some other homes that maybe they didn't see because yeah. they're going to come in low. So you'll probably know before that appraisal comes in if it's going to be significantly low. But I mean, I would say, depending on the market, somewhere between 80, 85% of the time, your appraisal is going to come in at value or above. And there's a bunch of different resolutions to what happens next, right? So if it comes in higher than the contract price, great for you. You know, <laughs> your home's worth more than you paid for it. Great. If it comes in lower, you have a couple of different options. You can pay the difference out of pocket. Yes. Just because it comes in lower doesn't mean you can't move forward with the transaction. Right. If you want to make up the difference out of your own pocket and the lender is only loaning on the amount that the home appraised for, fine. Uh, you can negotiate with the seller to lower the asking price right. to match the appraisal value. You can split the difference with them. Mm -hmm. It's just a number of different things that can occur after you get that appraisal back. It's just it's uh, It opens a whole new negotiation at that point if you made it contingent on the appraisal. If you didn't make it contingent on the appraisal, if you marked not contingent on appraisal, 
It is up to the buyer to That's make right. up the difference. However, and they have no, that is not a contingency that would allow them out of the contract. Correct. All right. So that's appraisals and inspections. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.